So I wanted to talk about a feature in the game that's really, really important as a player, uh, PvP and PvE to understand. So there's a buff in this game called Empower, and I'm sure you've heard of it. Uh, uh, every single weapon basically has Empower of some kind in the skill tree. So as you can see here, Evasive Tactics says deal 15% more damage for 5 seconds after dodging. And basically the way to understand what if it's an Empower or not is whether or not it applies the buff on the bottom of your bar. So as you can see, I did the roll. And for five seconds, I gained a, looks like a fist sign, right? Um, and that's how you know it's an empower because of that icon down there. So if we hover over it, it says your damage is increased by 15%, which makes sense because our bow is currently out. And that's basically how you test it across every single weapon in the game. One thing I want to know is actually that your empowers do not carry over from weapons. So for example, as you saw my evasive tactics being procced, as soon as I switch weapons or sheath my weapon, it'll go away. So you cannot carry the empower over to other weapons, unfortunately. Now, there is a empower cap in this game, and it is 50% total. You cannot go above 50% empower. All the damage just gets nullified, and you won't gain any extra damage. This is super important to understand, especially for players who like to use the Void Gauntlet, because it has so much empower in its kit. Now, what else exactly counts towards this 50% empower cap besides the weapon's passives itself? So the first one is we want to look at is the armor. So as you can see here, I have an electrified elemental ward, which increases my lightning damage by 2%. That rune glass and all other elemental rune glasses count towards your empower. So if you have 5 lightning damage on your rune glass for a total of 10%, that's a 10% empower to your character. Now, there are some that don't actually count towards the empower cap, and those are the sided ones, which is the range damage. It's just a flat out 1% range damage. And the melee one, which is the 1% uh, melee damage. Those actually don't count towards your empower cap. Now, as you can also see, is on the armor piece itself is the harnessing perk, lightning harnessing specifically for this piece. Harnessing also does count towards empower cap as well. So if you have 2% on each piece, like I said, you will have a total of 20% empower already just from your armor and rune glass. Now, some other things that count towards the empower is the uh, ring damage. So as you can see, this is lightning damage plus 7% that also counts towards empower. And also honing stones count towards empower as well. So that's another 7%. So already just from the gear that I have equipped and the ring and the honing stone being popped, I have a total of 34% empower, specifically 34.1% empower. So that kind of has to keep be in my mind already when I am building my build for empower, right? So then what's the best way to hit that empower cap? Well, easy, evasive tactics, right? When I do a dodge roll, I'll gain a 15% empower on top of the 34%, which lands me at 49% empower. Now there's also some passives on the skill tree as well. For example, here on the uh, dex node, it's a 10% empower for 3 seconds, that also counts towards the empower. So if I were to proc this, I'd only gain actually 1% empower instead of 10%, right? Because I'm already at 49% as long as everything else is buffing me up. This is kind of where it mixes and matches for what gear you want to go for. So say for example, I have shirking empower on my amulet, which I don't hear, but essentially what it does is it gives you a 4% empower after dodging an attack up to four times, so 16% empower. Well, that tells me, okay, if I want to, to play that, and instead of getting lightning harnessing, I can use a defensive perk instead of harnessing because the shirk will bring me up to empower cap. So you can go for something more defensive instead of harnessing like, say, conditioning or whatever else you want to put on the armor piece. So unless it's specified on the artifacts themselves, most of the artifacts do not count as empower. So you can see on this bow here, bolt caster, it says increases your lightning damage for both weapons by 20%. There's also other examples of this like the hammer increases your lightning damage with both weapons by 20%, along with the fire staff, 20% damage when you hit a target within 8 meters, uh, or the finisher. All of these weapons that increase your damage don't actually count towards the empower cap. These are all base damage increases, so you don't have to worry about these being counted towards your empower cap. 
It's just a flat out base damage increase. Some other examples of base damage increases are things that read as such. For example, long range, right? These conditionals here. Uh, finishing shot, deal 50% more damage to targets below 50% health. Things of that kind of nature that don't specify, it gives you an empower and also doesn't apply a buff at the bottom is most likely going to not count towards your empower cap. So in PvP, a lot of weapons, specifically the newest weapon, the flail and shield, have a lot of weakens. What the weakens do is it negates your empower. So essentially what that means is if you're at 50% empower cap, right, and you get weakened by 20%, your empower is now going to be 30%. It's not a base damage decrease. Weaken just decreases your empower. And it goes the opposite way, right? So weaken also can only go up to negative 50%, I believe. But that's basically what you want to understand is, right? Is even if you go over empower cap, it actually might be beneficial for specifically, say, uh, PvP melee builds because you might get weakened by the enemy but you'll still have max uptime on your damage. So for example, say I have Harnessing and Bloodlust, and I have a total of up to basically 50%, maybe even 60% in power, right? I have 60% in power, it's 10% over. That's okay, because if I get weakened by say a Tondo, which uh, weakens you by 10%, then you'll still be at maximum damage because you're going over the empower cap. And that's about it for this video. If you guys have any questions about anything else in the game, you can hit me up at twitch.tv slash adorian510. I'm live every single day. I also have some really good gameplay that you can watch as well as one of the best players in this game regarding PvP. So feel free to stop by if you're interested. Other than that, see you guys later. Have a good rest of your day and peace out.